Hello, and welcome to Direction Northeast. I'm Isaiah Quaintance. This program is a presentation of the Mass Communications Department of Northeast State Community College. Today we will talk about the criminal justice program in Northeast State. We'll meet our guests and start our discussions following these messages. Opportunity is waiting just around the corner. If you look close enough and stay focused, you can see the transformation. It's groundbreaking, and it's just the beginning. It's your future, and it begins at Northeast State. Wherever you're going, Northeast State Community College, we're here to get you there. Our guests today are Eric Stanton and Kelsey Hatcher, instructor of the Criminal Justice Program and president of the Criminal Justice Society. Thank you all for coming on today. Thank you for having us. So, Eric, you go first. Tell me a little bit about how you got involved in criminal justice. Sure. Well, I was blessed starting in the early 90s with being able to go work for the Washington County Sheriff's Office. Worked there for a number of years, followed by working at East Tennessee State University and then going back again to the Washington County Sheriff's Office. And then I was blessed in 2010 with being able to start to come out here to Northeast State and teach. And Kelsey, why did you decide to pursue a career in criminal justice? Um, ever since I was young, I always just wanted to serve and I couldn't think of any better way than in law enforcement, so I decided to major in criminal justice. Now, we have all heard of criminal justice, but what exactly is criminal justice? That's a good question. A lot of people think of criminal justice as just being law enforcement. Actually, criminal justice entails a lot more than just law enforcement. It entails, of course, law enforcement, corrections, the courts, and probation and parole. So we have students that come to school here at Northeast State, and after their two years and get their associate, they either go on to other schools like East Tennessee State University, Milligan King, one of those, Tusculum, or they end up going uh, straight to work. And so that is actually the areas that, that our students are looking for, for employment in. Now, why is it so important to have a criminal justice system? It is very important to have, and you know, we talked about this on an earlier episode, but the criminal justice system as a whole is really the foundation that this, this country is built on, if you think. You know, our job in the criminal justice system is to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And so we are the foundation because, like we talked about before, if you didn't have a criminal justice system, a system that's working together, a system that really came about in the 1950s and 60s, instead of having all these entities working separately, working together, so from the initial call, investigation, to the arrest, to confinement, to adjudication in the courts, all the way through probation and parole, if we didn't have that system, we would have anarchy and stuff of that nature. I, I, we talked about The Purge before. We talked about uh, old movies like Mad Max, where there is no law enforcement element or criminal justice system. And it's very important because, again, it's the foundation that allows us to, to quite frankly, sit here and have this chat today. Because if outside our studio right now The Purge was going on or something of that nature, we wouldn't have time to come in here and produce this program if we had folks that were right now outside the door trying to get in here to do harm to us. So a lot of folks don't really realize the importance of the system. They do at three in the morning when they call and initiate the system. As I say, plumbers are very important, uh, you know, electricians are very important, but who are you going to call at three in the morning when you have an emergency? You know, is it going to be your plumber? Is it going to be your electrician? Well, if it's not a plumbing matter electrician, you're going to call 911. And so those are the folks that are going to come out. So again, it's, it's the foundation that really supports and defends our Constitution in this country. And again, allows us the freedom to be able to do what we're doing today. What degrees are offered at Northeast State regarding criminal justice? We have two. We have the AAS in criminal justice, which is the Associates of Applied Science. We also have the Associates of Science or Associates of Art in criminal justice. A little different in the, in the two, and I'll explain that here real quickly. With the AAS degree, the Associates of Applied Science, the students come in, that degree is made for it's what we call a terminal degree where they'll do their two years here at Northeast. Then they'll go on to work, as we talked about, either in law enforcement, corrections, probation and parole, the courts, et cetera. And so the way, reason why it's designed that way is, again, just so they're ready to go ahead and, and get out there and, and get going and they don't necessarily you know, finish up bachelor's degrees. With that being said, they have 12 criminal justice classes that they take, so it's really criminal justice focused. 
They're taking everything from intro to criminal justice, intro to legal process, homeland security, issues and ethics, criminal law, criminal investigations, just to name a few. On the other side of the coin is our Associates of Science or Associates of Arts. That's for students that are wanting to go on to four-year institutions like East Tennessee State University, Milligan College, uh, any of those, Tusculum University, any of those, or King University, any of those that somebody might want to go to. The difference is those students only receive four criminal justice classes. They receive Intro to Criminal Justice, Intro to Legal Process, Intro to Corrections, Intro to Law Enforcement. The rest of their classes are made up of what we call college prep courses. So it's your humanities, it's your arts, it's your uh, literature, it's your, stu your sciences, stuff of that nature to where they're ready to transfer. Again, the idea being is we're just giving them a taste of it at this level and then they can major it at the four-year institution. That's why they only have the four classes at this level. So again, it's really what our students are looking for. Right now we're kind of balanced. We actually have more AAS students than we do AS students. So right now we have more students like Kelsey that are wanting to go to work once they get their degrees. Uh, however, you know, especially nowadays as we talked about on other episodes about society and criminal justice, the system itself requiring folks to be smarter, there's a lot of agencies now that are requiring bachelor's degrees or some even higher. So it, it is, we do have some students that are wanting to go on and pursue those things, but we're very proud of both our programs. We've been growing. We've been growing substantially for the last few years. We got uh, great partners on board with us. Uh, we got uh, great students. And so we're just really excited about the, the destinations and places yet to come. Now, Kelsey, you're the president of the Criminal Justice Society. Tell me a little bit about what you all do in that program. Um, so we have weekly guest speakers. So yesterday we had um, Sergeant Lowe with the John City Police Department. They had hostage negotiation. But we have guest speakers from different areas of criminal justice just to for our students that have interest. We also do community service and we also go on tours of like jails and other things like that. But we just like to, you know, make it really outgoing so everybody can get to know the um, places they could work in the future or whatnot. Now, Eric, can you tell me a little bit about how this Criminal Justice Society relates to the classes regarding criminal justice? Absolutely, it absolutely relates to it because it's, it gives us the opportunity to get away from the curriculum to bring in our hiring partners and our partners have been so good to us because as you know we've discussed off camera before there's a huge shortage of folks right now in criminal justice as a whole across the spectrum I mean right now at Northeast Correctional Facility at Tennessee Department of Correction there's only over 70 openings right now up, up in uh, Mountain City at that facility so there is a huge need for trained professionals to, to step into these roles and so it is very important because what the Criminal Justice Society allows us to do is several things. One is I am very big on servant leadership. I'm very big on serving others. And I want that to be passed on to the students because I think obviously that's very important that people that go into any type of public service, but especially those going to criminal justice or firefighting or EMS, dispatching, military, understand that their job is to serve others, to serve something bigger than they are. And so I think it's very important. And so by having the Criminal Justice Society, it allows us to bring in those professionals, like Kelsey was talking about, having a hostage negotiator there yesterday. Here's, here's the man that right there is in the middle of all some of the biggest negotiations and stuff that goes on in Johnson City. Here, so he's able to tell us that, you know, a lot of times being patient, listening, trying to come up with a win-win situation is better than just going and storming in and kicking the doors in. So it's important for our, for our students to hear that. But more importantly, it gives our students the opportunity to meet the people that they might want to work for in the future. And it gives a, an opportunity for the, the hiring managers and the people that are coming, taking their time to talk to us and to show us and demonstrate stuff to us the opportunity then to meet our students at well. So it's really a win-win situation. We're very blessed to have these partnerships. And again, with the shortage, a lot of these partners have come and found us because they recognize that here at Northeast State that we are turning out good quality students. Now you talked about the community service a little bit. Can you elaborate with some examples? Sure, absolutely. I'll, I'll say one that we're very proud of. For the last several years, we've partnered with the Tennessee Department of Transportation and their Tennessee Adopt a Highway program. We actually have adopted two miles of road just right outside the, the campus here on State Route 75 from the Sullivan County line to mile marker two. And so three to four times a year, we'll go out there with the students 
and we'll pick up trash and police the areas up and leave it a lot better than, than we found it. And we've been recognized several times by the state um, as their, you know, the trash crew of the, of the month and stuff of that nature. We were recently featured in Tennessee Magazine. So we're very happy with that partnership. It's a great program, but more importantly, it allows my students to see what it means once again to serve others and to serve the community. I mean, how important is it that if you or I go out here and we just do one little thing in society to make it better, if everybody did that, can you imagine what a better place it would be? And so, yes, it's only a two-mile stretch of the road that we're doing, but how important that is. If everybody did a two-mile stretch of the road, you wouldn't have any litter, and it's a beautiful thing. And it allows people to, once again, to enjoy the beauty of our area, but more importantly, it allows our students to, to serve their communities and serve others. Now, Kelsey, as being a member of this Criminal Justice Society, what have you learned through community service? Mm, I've learned that it's very important to, to serve like the community because we wouldn't be able to do anything without the people that support us. So it's good to give back and um, just, I mean, it's like to be a servant, you got to serve others. So it's instilled in all of us, so we just want to do it. Now, both of you all a little bit, you can start, Eric. How did you go about starting this program? Well, the Criminal Justice Society, I must say my predecessor had done a great job of, of building the Criminal Justice Department. A gentleman by the name of Steve Butoff, retired FBI agent, great gentleman. And one thing he said, I, I was telling your director before we went on to the, uh, before we went on a few minutes ago, that Steve told me, he told me when he left the program, he said, the one advice I can have for you, he said, you're going to do great in, in your job with your experience in being an instructor and everything, you're going to do great. But the one advice, he says, bring back the Criminal Justice Society. He said that was his one regret, that it had kind of died off and that they hadn't been able to sustain it and bring it back. And so I took that to heart because Steve is obviously somebody had done this job, was well respected, had done a great job, outstanding job. And so we brought it back and I noticed immediately retention rates started to improve. We also recruiting started to improve and just overall camaraderie. I mean, yesterday the students, it was kind of funny, we're out in the, the hallway just between classes, just talking and joking and having a good time. And that means a lot to, to me as an instructor and others because they built those relationships, not only in class, but also outside of class as well. And it gives that team approach that they're gonna need working in the criminal justice system. But also, again, it just gives them the ability to get through this. So when things are tough, time's tough, Maybe you got a tough test coming up. They're there to support each other, and that to me is just a really awesome thing. And Kelsey, what is your role as president of this society? Um, I'm supposed to schedule speakers, um, just maintain the club, make sure everybody's satisfied. Um, I just give direction to anybody who needs it, and uh, scheduling events, and talking to community leaders and stuff like that um, to just benefit our members in the society. Now, obviously, y'all are very apparent at the school. Um, what are some different things you've done to get in touch with students to let them know about your program? We've done several things. We run a very active Facebook page. Uh, Kelsey and, and her team run that for us. We also have other uh, social media outlets. We got you know Twitter and stuff like that, some Snapchat, some other social media outlets, which is important. But the main thing is just getting involved with our campus, just getting involved with activities, being seen, being supportive, being a campus leader, if you will to where our students are being seen because people again you know everybody wants to belong to something you know everybody wants to feel like they're welcome and belong to something and one thing we do you don't have to be a criminal justice major to join the criminal justice society we have other majors in there if you have an interest in criminal justice even if you haven't ever taken a criminal justice class or even have a desire to take it you know anybody's welcome into into the society and we again we have members that are, aren't necessarily criminal justice majors but again, it's, we're out there doing the stuff and getting to experience the stuff and getting involved with our community, which is absolutely, you know, very, very, very important, especially here at Northeast State. Now, Kelsey, can you tell me what are some of the things the Criminal Justice Society does? Um, well, again, we have the guest speakers and we also go and tour jails and we do ride-alongs with John City Police Department. Um, we do community service and and then to like just have like a stress relief like to go out to eat play laser tag and stuff like that but um majority of the time we're all just hanging out and then doing stuff that's educational but fun and what types of people would you say should consider joining this club i mean anybody can join but the people we like the most are the ones that are really serious about wanting to get a future career the ones that are driven focused um type a personalities we call ourselves the alphas but um just anybody that's like serious about going into criminal justice and wanting a career. 
And can you tell me about any former or current members who you're particularly proud of for the successes they've had after they moved on from the program or even during the program? A absolutely. Two in particular that I'll talk about real quick. One a non-traditional, one a traditional. Our non-traditional students, a young lady by the name of Jessica Sweet Claudio, who's an Air Force veteran. Her husband's actually a local recruiter with the Air Force. And about a week before she graduated last year, one of the partnerships that we had formed was with, with a local probation and parole agency, and they had remembered Jessica and so forth. They knew what type of students we had. So this is literally timeline basically is the way it happened. Got a call on a Tuesday or Wednesday the week before graduation from this probation and parole company asking if we had any students to fill a position immediately. Uh, I immediately called Jessica because she had expressed an interest in it. She filled out her application on a Thursday, had her first interview uh, Friday, had her second interview on Monday, uh, graduated Tuesday, and basically went to work on Wednesday. And of course, is still there doing great things, loving the job. And again, that has to do with the partnerships that we form, but more importantly, it just shows the quality of student that we have here at Northeast State that we're turning out to where we actually have folks coming to us, asking us for graduates. And that means a lot, especially in this economy. It, mean, it means a lot. Another one I think of is a young man by the name of Nick Rambo, and he went to school here, and, and Nick had some adversity in his life, and basically overcame all of it, and he ended up going to work for Kingsport Police Department as a policeman over there. But he's absolutely another one that, again, got that job, uh, of course, on his own abilities, but also with the relationships that we formed with the Kingsport Police Department and others to where they were able to see Nick and they were able to see that he's a type officer they were looking for. So that's just two of many uh, examples we have. I tell my classes that every person that graduated from the criminal justice program this last year that wanted a career in criminal justice got one. Now, of course, a lot of them went on to four-year institutions, but the ones that wanted one got one. Now, that's not a guarantee that it's going to be that way every year, but we're proud of, of what's going on. We're proud of this department. We're proud of our students. We're proud of Northeast State and our administrators and our faculty and staff and, and fellow students for supporting this program and uh, continuing to support it and continuing to into the future. So we are very excited about what we're doing. And Kelsey, since you've been a part of this Criminal Justice Society, have you participated in any activities that you felt have taking you a step closer to achieving your career goals? Oh, definitely. I think every meeting is very beneficial because I've built relationships with the hiring partners. Definitely the ride-alongs because I got to do like hands-on experience with police officers and get to know everybody at the police department. Going on the jails, you got to meet the sheriff and all the corrections officers there. And just the trash pickup, we get a lot of publicity for it, so we get to meet a lot of people. So definitely I'm getting my name out there and a lot of our members are getting our name out there and it's very beneficial. And each of you, I'll start with Eric, talk about some of your favorite activities you've taken part in while in the Criminal Justice Society. Well, some of them, we, there's so many of them. Every week is, is something special. But we went to, back in November of 2018, we went to Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary, which has been closed for a number of years. However, it was nice, especially for my correction student, we talk about the old Auburn-style prisons versus the new housing units. So it was nice for them to see what an old Auburn style prison was like and how different it is from you know, the current uh, housing unit design that we have in correctional facilities. So that was one of my favorite trips, but it's much like what Kelsey said earlier. It's just the camaraderie. We've gone to crime museums together. We've, we've gone all types of places, but probably, interestingly enough, probably one of my favorite things we do is that adopt a highway because when we do it, we do it as a group. We go into teams, but afterwards, then we fellowship at a local restaurant and part of the the benefit that we give to the student for their community service is we provide them lunch and so we go to a local restaurant that's close here to campus and we're able to fellowship and eat and all that good stuff And it's just a really great time and again it allows people to have that sense of belonging to feel like they're wanted because they are everybody everybody's special I tell people which is true everybody on this campus from the president to, to the person who, who cleans the floors at 3 o'clock in the morning are equally as important if we didn't have wonderful custodians at this college to, to keep our areas clean, you know, disease and everything else would, would come about, trash. I mean, think about the plague in the medieval times. That's what happened. So everybody on this campus is equally as important. It's the same way with our students. And so, you know, our success is kind of an old thing that I heard. Our success is based on our student success. And it's very true. Without our students, without them being successful, we wouldn't have a job. I jokingly say this, which is true that this is the best job in the world, and it is. My job's the best job in the world. 
And again, I love it because once again, I get to come here every day and work with great faculty, work with great staff, work with great administrators, but most importantly, just get to work with great students. And that's, that's an awesome thing for me. And Kelsey, what are the, some of the favorite activities you've taken part of? Personally, mine are just the meetings and like hanging out before and after because that's the time we get to spend together the most. I would say my favorite outside thing is definitely probably the ride-alongs are going to the jails because we're like actually involved and it's really cool to see all that stuff and plus everybody's like nervous going on that stuff and so it's just really fun. I, I personally just enjoy everything. So. And Kelsey, how has this program impacted you? Um, it's impacted me a lot. It's brought me out of my shell. It's, uh, I've learned a lot. Um, I definitely now know that criminal justice is something that I want to do. Before I was like interested, but now it's like I know 100%. And it's really built like a team bond, family bond, and it ma it's given me a whole new perspective on life in general of that I need to serve others instead of myself and, um, and how to like have just a family bond with everybody. Eric, how has it personally impacted you? Same way, just the inspiration that the students give me. The fact that even though I'm no longer active in law enforcement or active in firefighting or anything of that nature, to know that we're training the next generations of professionals to do this very honorable and, and very needed thing, you know, whatever it is in, in criminal justice or whatever it is in society, first responders, fire, police, EMS, whatever it is, dispatchers, how important it is. And so to me, that is the, the best thing that's happened to me is seeing my students grow, seeing the students go out here and do great things, and just uh, really just kind of living vicariously through them as they enjoy, you know, the first few years of their career and getting to see them succeed. You know, it's huge. It's huge. I, I tell the students oftentimes that if I ever turn on the news and see that one of my students have failed, I feel like I failed. What have I done that has led them to do that? So I take it very seriously. And I know the students take it very seriously as well. And it's always good to see our graduates go out and do great things. And it's always great when I see them back on some place in society and just talk about how great Northeast State has been for them and, and how they wouldn't be where they are if it wasn't for Northeast State. So we're doing a lot of great things out here, not only in the criminal justice department, but all across campus. And so, I, you know, I'd encourage anybody, especially with Tennessee Promise, Tennessee Reconnect, to come out and try Northeast State. I mean, come out and try it. Come out and try the community college. You know, get that more personal approach. Get the smaller classroom sizes. You know, get the more personal approach with folks that have worked in their fields and stuff of that nature. It's, we got great instructors out here. We got great staff members and we have great students, like I said before. So anybody that's looking for anything, even if it's not criminal justice, like yourself, we got great programs. So I encourage everybody to come out and try that. And Kelsey, what motivated you to take the role as president? Um, I saw what the previous president did and it kind of inspired me because I was like, I can definitely do that. I always saw myself as a leader, but I wanted to help everybody else too. So I was like, if I can, you know, make some impact on somebody else, then that's what I want to do. So I applied for it, got it, and I've been blessed ever since to, to hold the position and be successful in it. And Eric, what's your motivation to help these students? Just seeing the students succeed. I know we talked about a minute ago, but really that's the truth. It's just seeing them succeed, knowing that, you know, most of my students are traditional, but I have some non-traditional students that, you know, have been told they can't do it, you know, that they'll never amount to anything, stuff of that nature. Even myself, you know, I was in 11th grade. I had a teacher, I won't say her name, she's still alive, that told my mother that I would, you know, I'd be lucky if I ever graduated from high school, much less to go and do anything productive. And so the fact that I can encourage folks through my own personal learning and my own personal history is important. And it's very important that uh, once again, Kelsey and, and all of her fellow students and stuff of that nature, I want to see them succeed. I want to be able to look with pride one day when I retire and I look at Johnson City or I look at other departments and say, you know, those students came through Northeast State. And again, one of our local partners was telling us just this week that they've decided now just to focus on Northeast State, targeting uh, our students for employment. Because once again, they've recognized the importance of our students. They see what we're doing. We have an advisory board that meets once a year that consists of a lot of law enforcement agencies and, and correctional agencies and probation and parole and the courts, all the elements in there. They guide us in what they're looking for. And so we're very responsive at this school to be able to meet their needs and as a result of meeting their needs we're able to develop the workforce and we're able to supply them with the leaders for tomorrow. And Kelsey tell me a little bit 
about some of the other students in positions of power within the criminal justice society. Okay, so we have Abby, who's our vice president. She's in charge of the social media, and she's actually going into social work, and she'd be a really good social work. She's, have, she's actually getting like three degrees from here. I think she's a triple major. And then we have Cameron Campbell. She's our secretary, and she wants to be a canine officer with uh, Johnson City. And then we have Bob Whitfield, and he's our treasurer, and he wants to do TBI and he wants to go federal. And uh, Camlin's in the AS and Abby and Bob are transferring to ETSU, I believe. And Eric, I'll start with you. What is the main thing you hope students take away from this program after having been a part of it? Quite simply, that they're in service to others, servant leadership, and to never forget that they are the foundation that this country's built on. Like mentioned in a previous episode, our Constitution, as beautiful as it is, you know, the seven articles of the Constitution and, and the amendments, as beautiful as it is, is just ink on paper. And it takes somebody to enforce those laws that our lawmakers create and that our founding fathers made. And so it's very important for them to realize that this is a very important job, very important job. And that in the, the time of their life where they feel that, that they can no longer put the utmost attention into this, they need to walk away. So again, just the importance of it, the importance of serving others, the importance of being a servant leader and respecting the rights of others. I mean, just understanding that just because somebody doesn't look like you or talk like you or act like you, you know, we're all in this together. So, you know, you're there to, to protect everybody. So any personal biases you have, you need to leave them at home, you know, and then not bring them out and not let, you know, you gotta support everybody. And so, that's very important, so I make sure they understand that, and I make sure they understand over and over again, again, what an important role this is in ethics, and you have to be ethical at all times, because the minute you're, you're seen as not ethical, you're done, and that's very important, so. Thank you very much. Thank you to both of you for coming, all today, coming on today, and we'll be back in just a moment to wrap up Direction Northeast. lot of things in my life, but there is no substitute for hard work. If you've got the will and determination, doors will always continue to open. Life puts us in the driver's seat. Where we go and what we accomplish is up to us. What's that old saying? When the going gets tough, the tough get going. That concludes the program for today. We talked with Eric Stanton, criminal justice instructor at Northeast State, and Kelsey Hatcher, examined the criminal justice program at Northeast State. Community is very important to the students at Northeast State Community College, and this program takes a look at a few of the subjects they find important. Until next time we meet, on behalf of the students, staff, and faculty of Northeast State Community College, I'm Isaiah Quaintance, and this is Direction Northeast.